Good evening. This is CTV News for Thursday, December 17th. I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us. Well, Freddie Gray's family has reportedly said they're hopeful that William Porter will be retried after yesterday's mistrial in his case. He's charged with manslaughter and other crimes in connection with Gray's death. Now Gray's family, along with so many others, are anxiously awaiting to see what's next for him and the five others. While there have been some small protests around the city, there haven't been any major disruptions reported. The big question now is what's next after yesterday's hung jury in the Freddie Gray trial? And for that answer, many eyes are on the courthouse behind me. As attorneys on both sides of the trial huddled in the chambers of Judge Barry Williams at the courthouse in Baltimore this morning to figure out what's the next step, some in the city react to the outcome of yesterday's trial. The outcome of the first trial, I think, uh, has some folks maybe disappointed. But Todd Yeary with the NAACP is part of a coalition of civil rights and community groups calling for peace and unity. We're saying stay, stay engaged. Uh, continue to make your voice heard, do it in a peaceful way, and let's recognize that unless we work together, we're not going to get to the resolution that we all want. We are calling on peaceful protests. We are calling for multiracial dialogues between the Latino community, the black community, anyone who is willing to talk about what is going on, because this needs to be talked through in the individual level, but also we need to join together and peacefully protest for our voices to be heard. After about 16 hours of deliberation, jurors could not reach a verdict in the William Porter case. Prosecutors said he was partly to blame for Freddie Gray's death because he didn't call an ambulance or buckle him into the police vehicle after he was arrested. Of the six officers, his case was first since the prosecution wanted to use his testimony against several of the other cops, but the mistrial complicates that strategy. It's legal analysis. One, uh, the, the state has brought the charges. That's part of the process. They bring the charges on behalf of the people. The jury gave a response that they could not find enough to get a unanimous vote on either guilt or innocence. Do we come back and retry that? And That's the big question that the prosecution and defense are still trying to answer following the meeting with the judge, something that further delays closure for this already anxious city. The police union, which denounced the charges back in May, said, quote, unquote, the hung jury was frustrating to everyone involved. Meanwhile, William Porter is on unpaid leave from the police department pending the outcome of the case. I'm Denise Douglas, CTV News. And following the announcement, Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake asked residents to respect the legal process and to keep protests peaceful. In a statement, U.S. Senator Ben Cardin called for peace and unity as the trials move forward, adding that both economic and judicial changes are needed to help the city of Baltimore grow. Well, the city of Laurel is making sure its employees are prepared in case of an active shooter situation. This afternoon, police officers conducted a training session teaching workers what to do when faced with life or death. Latifa Majid has more on the story. Well, today in training, officers discuss three protocols, and that's to run, hide, or fight. And this technique can be used whether you're in a workplace, at a school, or in a mall. If you can find a way out of the location, do so. A mass shooting can happen anywhere, anytime. Obviously, active shooter events seem to be occurring on a semi-regular basis, so people need to be aware of what to do. Being prepared for any situation is important, so the more training we can have, the better. Um, just like being CPR certified or any other um, emergency preparation you can do, it's, it's great to have. We're going to start with a video from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department on active shooter. So we have the town center shopping mall, suspects wearing a face mask, possible body. Officers from the Laurel Police Department are teaching employees three techniques, run, hide, and fight. If possible to run and get out of the building or get away from the shooter, if you can't do that, to hide in a safe location where you will be inaccessible to the shooter and as a kind of a last resort to fight if you need to fight the shooter. And if you have to fight, Fable says you can use anything in the room to defend yourself. You could use almost anything as an improvised weapon. You could use a, a chair, a desk lamp, a computer, a broom, anything that you can kind of attack the shooter with to disrupt them from uh, attacking you. 
In Laurel, I'm Latifah Majid, CTV News. And the police department held four training sessions over a span of two days for those employees. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration kicks off its annual holiday crackdown of impaired drivers with the release of ads that will air on television, digital outlets, and in movie theaters across the nation. CTV's Janine Samuels is at Regal Cinemas in the district with more. Going to a movie is both entertainment and enjoyment, but on opening day and actually through the holidays of Star Wars The Force Awakens, a very important and serious message will play before the start of the movie. It's part of a national campaign on drunk drivers with a message of drive sober or get pulled over. This year we're going to be unveiling a new and powerful advertisement that drives home a very particular danger of drunk driving, and that is that you can't trust your own judgment about driving once you've been drinking. That voice in your head that tells you it's okay, you're not. Just get in the car! In 2014, there were close to 10,000 alcohol-related driving fatalities. 69% of these deaths involved at least one driver with nearly twice the legal blood alcohol concentration limit. In the time it takes to watch a movie here at the Regal Theater, just a couple hours, two more people are going to die in a drunk driving crash. Drunk driving collisions are violent crimes. Drunk, impaired driver behind the wheel is just as dangerous or even more dangerous than an individual with a gun or other kind of weapon. Now, you just heard from a Montgomery County police captain who is very passionate about this issue, due in part to the recent death of a 24-year-old police officer who was struck by a driver suspected to be under the influence. At Gallery Place in Washington, D.C., I'm Janine Samuels for CTV News. And as a result of Officer Noah Leota's death, Senator Feldman is looking to make changes in drunk driving laws in Maryland at the upcoming General Assembly session. Well, a man has been indicted for the October murder of his former girlfriend. Prosecutors say 59-year-old Mitchell Cole broke into the Perryville house of Amanda Jones and surprised her when she came home. Her body was discovered in the basement by her daughter. Investigators say Cole became angry after learning Jones was in another relationship. His arraignment is set for January 8th. A former Montgomery County official is charged after engaging in inappropriate behavior at the workplace. Israel Mangrew, the former court commissioner of Montgomery County, has been charged with visual surveillance, misconduct in office, and other charges. Back in November, he allegedly took a photo up an employee's skirt with a telephone. Now, the victim claims she saw a flash or shutter movement from the cellular device. Mangrew has been fired from his position. His trial is set for January 28th in Rockville. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone.